Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Catholic Talk Show. Today we're going to be talking about how to get them kids to Mass. And not how just to get them to Mass, but how to have them enjoy going to Mass. And we're joined with Jordan Watwood from Everything Catholic. And we're going to tell you some ways to get your children more engaged in the Mass so that they have a faith that sticks with them through the rest of their life. Spare the rod, spoil the kid. Let's figure out how to do it. Bam! <laughs> Jordan, welcome back. Hey, thanks, guys. Good hey, to Jordan. Be here. Hey, very, very <laughs> popular. Hey, hey thank you. Talk show. Thank we you. Thank Jordan's you. creeping up there on the all-time guest list. He's almost a permanent member of the table at this point. I mean, we got Brandon Vaught, Steve Weidenkopf, and, and Jordan Wadwood are our most frequent guests. And our guests. boy Keith Nestor too. We can't forget. Keith. He's been on. Yeah, we have a couple of yeah. people who've been on twice. There's only been a few who've been on more than twice. Oh, good point. That's true. I feel very privileged. You should. <laughs> thank you. But we're also very privileged to have you. But you know, today we're talking about. How to get kids to mass, right? Yeah. Uh, I always remember the saying that babies crying in church is the sound of a church that's going to continue to live on, right? And when, you, and when you don't hear babies cry, it means the church is dying. Yeah. No crying, the church is dying. That's right. <laughs> and, you know, we're parents. All of us have kids. You are the priest, right? So you got you got to minister all these kids. It's it's amazing, and especially here at the parish at St. John Paul II in Nocatee, like we have a ton of kids and young families coming to church, and it's just really enjoyable to kind of see that revival. But there has to be a disposition pastorally in leadership for openness to to the children mm -hmm. and and give them a sense that they belong to the church. It's not just that they're getting drugged to church. I remember Lecrae, the my my favorite Christian rapper, yeah. but he he talked about like how he was a drug baby and because his mom drug him to church. And it's <laughs> uh, like the sense of being, you know, coerced by your parents yeah. and like forced into the car or the van and like against their will and you're taking them to church and it's like it's always a fight. That's not that's not the spirit, but I think once we once we create on a leadership level, pastorally speaking, a sense of openness to families. And I remember talking to this mom in Publix, and and we were having this great conversation. She got a little baby, and she's like, "Father, I really don't feel comfortable. I'm Catholic, but I haven't been to church in a long time because I feel bad because my baby's going to cry." And I said, "Well, come to the noon mass because it's the cry room mass. Everybody in the church has a baby, and it does yeah. not bother me at all to hear yeah. babies crying. Yeah. So it's it's more important to hear that than anything." I have to say mm. during a homily, yeah. you know, and I think that that's important on the leadership level, but knowing from you guys, you're, you're with your kids day in and day out. You have to discipline them and you want to discipline them spiritually on top of all the other things behaviorally. So what, how do you guys approach it? I mean, she like, well, you know, I think one of the things that I hear all the time is people who, you know, I know who are ex Catholics or who like don't go to church anymore. They're like, yeah, my parents used to drag me to church and I hated it. And then, then as soon as I was 18 and they didn't have to make me go to church, they stopped going. Yeah. That and was that's, me. yeah, it I was mean, me too. Like, I, I, I broke my mom's practice of bringing me to church when I was 16, 15, 16 years old, mm -hmm. you know? And it's like she almost gave up on the on the fight of like fighting me constantly <laughs> to go, mm -hmm. but she prayed and suffered that for several years before I came back. Yeah, she's Beautiful. your own Saint Monica. She is. That's why I wear my Saint Monica socks. Now, one of thinking the things, but but talking about that and thinking about that, there's always a thing that in my mind, my concept of parenting is you know you're raising kids, right? No, you're raising adults. They are children well, that's a now, great way to put it. but you are raising adults. You don't want these people who are entrusted to you to be children, mm -hmm. morally, emotionally, and functionally stunted as children the rest of their life. You want them to be confident, capable, healthy, happy adults. Yeah, that's where we treat our children as extensions of self. Yeah. And it's like they almost as like an appendage, is like they they bring you a value in, yeah. in your pride. They're, they're, they're a side piece. They're, they're an ornamentation. Like, yeah. oh, I have children. I have a dog. I have the car, right? Yeah. They're not. They're people, individuals of themselves. So that's a great way to put it. They don't it. bestow your own dignity. Right. Mm -hmm. They yeah. are dignity in itself. So when you start treating them like adults and you give them a sense of the responsibility, I'm not dragging you. I'm not making you go. I'm telling you why there's value to it. I'm showing you and I'm teaching you the value so that when you're an adult my age or in, and wherever you are in your life, there's still going to be something grounding, comforting, but also there's a real intellectual and spiritual connection, not just a forced making kids go to you know church and 
What about you guys? I, I love the way my my boy my boys boys school gets kids to go to mass. They're really really good with boys, and and what they do is they say, okay, well. We've got mass and silent reading during this time. You guys can choose whatever you want to do. Yeah, nice. so, so they all go yeah. to mass, you know. Yeah. It's really good. And and they, and they've helped us as parents develop mm -hmm. an appreciation for mass, which I really appreciate about them. Uh shout out to Western Academy. But um yeah, I, I think it I think it, it all goes back to the man of the house. We've talked about this before. We did a show on men. Uh we talked to a, a lady today whose mm -hmm. husband watched the show and really liked it too. Um, and, and, and practicing your faith, uh, understanding how to ask your kids for forgiveness to, to in practice, they see you doing it and they see this culminating every Sunday at mass. And what I like to do is go out to lunch afterwards. What we went, uh, we went to dinner afterwards, uh, mm -hmm. after mass, we went to the six o'clock mass mother's day. And we all go out to dinner and we we celebrate after mass, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know. And so it's just developing habits and also developing, um, you know, your own way of doing that where you're celebrating something, you know. I mean, this is this is something to be celebrated. And then you're practicing your faith as mm -hmm. well. Yeah, you know? meals meals after mass is one of the best things. I mean, because yeah. then there's kind of you know, children don't have a fully developed intellect yet. So there's kind of a payoff, right? Okay, if I do this, then there's the payoff for this. And it becomes a tradition, something they think of fondly. Mm -hmm. So that there's, it's the entire experience. It not, it's not just the solemnity and the stillness of match, but it's doesn't always fit with the kid's disposition. And, right? and let me tell you, it doesn't just work for kids. It also worked for my stepdad because that's how my mom brought him into the Catholic <laughs> church. Oh, <nice. laughs> it was like after mass, we go have crumb cake and a bagel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jack's know, like, I'm like, right, I'm Jack's down. like, I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> Next yeah. thing you know, we're we're immersing him in the holy water. Uh, yeah. Like youth group, like yeah. we're youth pastors. Like, how do we bring him in? You know, we, mm -hmm. we have the pizza, we do the fun activities, and then we have prayer there. It's right. definitely not something that you know you should say well, you need to go. You know what I mean? It's like you have to go. Uh, my mom did that. Uh, you know, my dad didn't really play a part in mm. uh, helping me foster an appreciation for mass. He just mm. went quietly and participated. But uh, yeah, I was like you guys. You know, it's like once I went got eighteen, I just didn't have any need to go. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, Jordan, you've got four four boys. Yeah, right. Yeah. Let's go. What's what's the mass attendance situation for the Wobblers? <laughs> yeah. Sundays can be tough. They can be great. Um, I think that that the best Sundays are the ones where we make a point that the most important thing we'll do all day is going to be mass and spending time together with the sacrament uh, as a family. And so we make sure that in the beginning of the day, the very beginning of the morning, that they know that's coming, right? Because yeah. springing it on the kids is going to cause them to get all upset or frustrated, or even though it happens every single week, they forget, right? So kind of setting the stage. And then, you know, doing things like um, on the way to Mass, listening to maybe the readings or something like that, or some soft music so that they're not all amped up mm -hmm. on you know, fast, loud music. I've got a couple DJs that like to sit in the back seat and <laughs> request songs, right? So that way, when they're walking into mass, they're kind of you know, at a, you know, a good speed, and they're they're ready to go. Um, and then we just bring lots of things for them to do, um, and you know, just kind of keep them focused and keep them from running around. And and that's for younger kids. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So my boys, I've got my oldest is eleven, and then we got a four and a half year break, and then we've got a, a six, five, and three year old, mm -hmm. and so. The younger ones need to be occupied. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, they're gonna be acting crazy. Um, so yeah, that, that works. Doesn't we aren't always um, as intentional about that as we should be. So sometimes it's a it's a bit <laughs> yeah. rough. Yeah. We, we were at um, <laughs> Good Friday liturgy, right? And we're there, and Johnny was maybe two at the time, and um, his cousin had brought his iPad, and there's there's this uh, Thomas the Train game, right? And they're playing this game, and you keep tapping the button, and the train goes faster. Well, they had the volume down. <clears throat> so we were like, <clears throat> you know, stations of the cross, and we're right, you know, Jesus is on the cross. 
And Johnny turned on the volume and he starts hitting this button. And Thomas the train in this English accent is going, faster, faster, faster. <laughs> and I'm like, oh no. So there's there's some dangers of bringing uh, uh, implements of, of uh, distraction <laughs> sure. with no. children, you know? Yeah. You know, there's always there's Cheerios and candies and junk all over the I, I've seen some I've seen some awesome resources out there in in kids' hands at the parish. And one in particular kind of reminded me of like a children's uh, missile. And it had like these spinning wheels and you could you can basically clothe the priest in what he's wearing. And then it had just like a brief description of like, you know, green, ordinary time, purple, advent, mm-hmm. you know. And so like I, I see her and she's sitting up front and she's like looking at me and doing all this yeah, stuff cool. in the book. And it's like coming up with creative plans of how we can move away from iPads and have like distinct things in our children's hands that could be a help to them, almost like our missiles are and our, our, our hymnals are to adults, to create that helpful tool in the hands of a child that they can enter into the mystery of the celebration and the liturgy mm-hmm. is important. Yeah, I mean, you've recently had to yell at me and Della Cross for yes, misbehaving in Yes, I have. And you're goofing <laughs> off in the back of the church of Our Lady of Guadalupe. Yes, but we were in the Franciscan was, parish. We right? were, but yeah. it was still the sh- that the yeah. Toma was in that church for a little yeah, while. And, and we were laughing at um, at the deacon, I think. No, <laughs> we, were, we were laughing at Deacon Tony. It was something. Don't, don't laughing. be laughing at my deacon. <laughs> He's my deacon. No, we were I, laughing I'm about the, we were laughing about the singing. Yes, that's right. And we were just in, we were in a great mood, and then Father Rich is like. It's, Father Rich has this amazing ability <laughs> to where, weave, where yeah. he can weave rebukes into his homily where no one else knows that it's happening. <laughs> Except for you. He's like, and you know, when you think about the things in the catechism, it's no laughing matter. And we should stop laughing about it. And, and you know he's talking to you. Yeah. Or, or like if, if like the slides that he's going through, he's like, you know, and it's all about timing. And if we don't get the timing right, if we're not on God's time and the timing isn't right, it's over with. And I'm like, dude, are you, you're pulling double shift here, man. Very impressive. Um, how do you feel? I mean, does anyone? How do I feel about you goofing off? Yeah. <laughs> so let me tell you how I feel. Here's this how you get song. children our sizes in song. there. But yeah. um, I, you know, we're talking about kids <laughs> crying in mass and distracted. Yeah. Does anyone here really care if kids are crying in mass? Everyone's self conscious parents, and a lot yeah. of parents when they have kids, they're like, "I'm not going to mass," and they, they will get out of going to mass the habit for years, two, yeah. three years until the kids stop. Mm-hmm. Does do anyone that. care about that? I don't. I, I had a lady come up to us at our uh, parish in DC and um, man, she came in she's just like, you need to watch it with your kid. And I'm just like, he's freaking two, yeah. right? Like, I mean, I don't know what you want from me, but yeah. I'm not going to stop coming to mass. That's what I told her. So yeah. you got to mm-hmm. figure out a way to make this work for you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know, <laughs> so some things that I I've seen, and this is just based on like, you know, four years being here at the parish and having an attitude and a response toward the children that are crying where I've always worked it into my homily, like always. I'm like, thank you, baby, for that emphasis that you just put on that. Yeah, that's good. And it's so good to hear, you know, like, and, and it's, it b- creates a moment of laughter, mm-hmm. um, but then also like employing other women to help parents. Like mm-hmm. sometimes, you know, I have, a, I have a single mom that sits, well, she's not a single mom. I don't think her husband comes to mass. So she's there with four of her children up front mm-hmm. by herself, little ones, and she's constantly having to discipline them, but that she's also trying to pray because she needs to be right. built up in the spirit, you yeah. know, and in the word and, and receive the Eucharist in a disposition of reverence. <clears throat> that needs help. You need help. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like open, open yourself up and interact. Don't be like the stranger danger, but like, hey, I'm Beverly. Right. And like, I'm, you know, <laughs> don't be a weirdo. You know, yeah, don't be a weirdo. <laughs> but at the Virtus. same time, you know, like, and, and, and this was really cool. So, you know, I think you guys know Teresa. This is T's, yeah. T's mom. And, um, you know, there was a poor woman, she was going through hell in her personal life. And I was walking with her for, for a couple of months and, um, she had three children and they were very animated children, but you knew that they were kind of also, uh, acting out of the stuff that was happening at Mm -hmm. home, you know, that was bad. Yeah. And she was just so overwhelmed and she kind of like, like kind of had like a little mental breakdown during the mass because the kids were Mm -hmm. acting up. And I just looked at Teresa because she's just like a saint, you know. I'm yeah. like, Bishop Esteban said things like, Teresa's a total saint. I, I believe, it, believe it too. And I just looked at her, and I'm like, and I just like kind of glanced over, and uh, and she just shot over there and just helped mother these children with mm. her. And it was beautiful, and they calmed down. Mm. She gave them something to entertain them with, and 
And that's the community response mm-hmm. to the crisis that the child's going through. Sure. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we may look at a baby crying and say, you know, oh, come on, kid, like, get over it. Like, sure. what are you doing? You're, you're like, you're a little hungry. That's what you're upset. Like, no, like, this is a crisis for the child. Yeah. You know, like, respond to the crisis, mm-hmm. be collective about it, be conscientious about it. And, and, at the same time that child's going through that crisis, so is the mom, right. so is the dad. Yeah. Have a little bit of sensitivity. That's super cool. I, I know when we were, this is another thing that I think really helps too with the kids is um, when we lived in Nashville, we went to St. Philip Catholic Church in Franklin, and the priest there at the time, his name was Father Bala, um, and he was he was awesome. The kids loved going to see him because mm-hmm. he was so approachable. You know, he would... If he wasn't celebrating and you were out in the narthex with crying kids, he'd come out and he was a Franciscan. So he had this hood on the back and he'd fill it with candy. <laughs> he'd, he'd pick up a kid and they'd go in and grab a little piece of candy out. You know, he was always, you know, had That's like cool. little stuffed animals and things, but yeah. he was just really fun. He would he would take our youngest Benjamin and he'd just walk around the whole church. He'd be like, I want that baby. And he'd just walk around. And, and then the kids were like, man, I want to go see Father Bala. And it made it a lot easier to go yes. to Mass because yes. he was there and they, they had a connection with him. Mm-hmm. So that's super important. That's and there just, is a charism to that, yeah. you know, like Father Peter Akinotiko, you know, he's just like such an intimidating, huge Nigerian man with this deep voice, but he has this heart of like yeah. love and like a teddy bear, like these kids just, I we, we were, I was at my first parish at St. Elizabeth <laughs> and these kids in the gathering space, I'd be preaching mass and they'd all be climbing up <laughs> over them and like all, you know, and they'd be running back to the gathering space just to spend time with Father Peter, That's which cool. is really, really awesome. You, you know, want to see that. I think in talking about this, I think this highlights the need for churches to be more intentional about how they are welcoming children Mm -hmm. and having resources available because you can have all the prayer shawl ministries and you can have all the soup kitchens and stuff. But if you're not getting young people in your church, your church is going to be dead within that's a generation. That's the most important outreach. And that's what right. we've been driving with our capital campaign. It's like, we're building out a campus for one principal outreach, the human family. Yeah. We've got to make sure that we're ministering to our families. And, and what would it cost a church? A couple hundred bucks to have some of those, those guides, some books, some kids' rosaries. Mm-hmm. It, look, even snack bags or whatever. Yep. Have them available. Make it a really intentionally welcoming place for children. That would make such a difference. And even if you never use them, families would see that and say, this place cares well, about yeah. the family. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? It's like Phil. You guys, know, you guys know how much I love Phil. You know, he's yeah. like my sacristan volunteer. He's like, anything I need, I just call Phil. Yeah. But, you know, like Phil. Was he, the, was he the one who brought us over the bourbon? Yes, yes okay. he brought over the Phil's bourbon. Guy. Phil's awesome. But, you know, Phil also kind of goes through these, like, manic episodes. Like, you know, and he kind of, like, hyper-focuses on <laughs> stuff. And he starts getting upset and riled up. And, like... <laughs> You know, he. I see this. Uh, this is a couple stories about Phil. So, we have legit candles. I don't like the electric ones. So we have legit candles, and I want them there. And I told the kids, there's no, there's no cost on it. Like, if a kid wants to light a candle, light a candle, take a moment of prayer. By the like, Mary statue in front of the Blessed Mother and Saint Joseph. I was going to so light this one kid, this morning, this and I didn't have any money on me, so I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> That's Not true. So this, this, uh, so this, this kid, you know, this boy goes up and he's lighting a candle. Well, you know, it starts turning into like a couple candles, yeah. you know. It's a kid. <laughs> got a lot of stuff going on. Got a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, Philip starts approaching this kid and he's in one of those those places and I know he's gonna like ream this kid. So like as he's getting up to like yell at this kid, I'm like, Philip <laughs> Like Phil stops, I'm like do not talk to that kid right now. Because <laughs> he's like going to tra- traumatize this kid in church, you know? And then, you know, the, the other thing is like, he's sweeping out the the uh, the chapel area and there's like Cheerios all over the floor and stuff. And he's like losing his mind. I'm like, thank God the kids are there. It's fine. So what? We sweep up a little bit of Cheerios. What do you think we do at home? Exactly. Yeah. We sweep this up Cheerios is, This all is the time. home of yeah. all of us. Right. You know, it's... Yeah, and like you said, I think those things are really important to have that really intentional outreach to the families. Um, That would be helpful to a lot of people. Now, here's another thing, you know, having families. What are some of the things to get to church on time? Because, dude, the the getting going to church with kids that's gotta be so that's not that hard. Getting to church, getting kids dressed, that's gotta be so tough. There is nothing that increases my internal temperature hotter than having to dress a child who does not want to get dressed. Uh and get them to church. I mean, I am 
my internal temperature is in the thousands yeah. of degrees. Finding yeah. shoes. And Finding miles. shoes Finding and socks. socks. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Dude. Holy cow. You're, like, you're wearing worse. mismatched socks, dude, and one of them's dirty, one's clean. I don't care. Yeah, that's what's ears, going on. Yeah. Yeah. My kids have almost like a, a visceral response to fabric that's not synthetic. <laughs> <laughs> they can't wear athletic clothes. Like it, it just irritates them beyond all belief. So the church clothes are typically not <laughs> made of that, that fabric. And so like I've got one, one of my kids, number three, it's like he'll turn into this heavy lip noodle when you're trying to put him in. He'll just be like, Bleh. You know, you're trying to get it on. It's just so tough sometimes. Laying the dead weight on you. Yeah, yeah. It does. So I've got a little one, Jude, with the Limbaugh family. Shout out Meg and Tyler. But, you know, Jude one time, because they've got they've got a ton of kids, the Limbaugh's here. And, uh, you know, Jude just shows up with no shoes one day. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, and yeah. Meg just looks and she's like, hey, yep. what's, what's up? There I've done go. that. I've done that. Yep. I'm totally cool. Yeah. Go yeah. full Moses on this, man. Take yeah. off your sandals, take <laughs> off your shoes and come on in. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. But, like, honestly, that's one of the reasons, like, I go to, like, 1130 or 12 o'clock mass. Yeah. I mean, specifically, <laughs> it's up. like, it takes so much pressure yeah. off. Like, yeah. you get up, it's like six you got enough time, yeah. right? You got if six you aim hours. It at the nine o'clock mass, you'll get there at eleven. Yeah, the nine o'clock mass. I'm sorry, is not feasible. Nope. Seven o'clock, yeah. not. Nah, I don't. Th- I don't all. think. I don't think that we would make it if it was my own funeral for a seven o'clock mass. <laughs> you know, so and that's why our family mass is is noon. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. and then we have the kids as ushers. We have kids that are lectors that are developing the skill of public. Yeah. Speech. You know, it's yeah. like. And then they feel like this is this is our church. This is, you know. Inviting kids into the liturgy yeah. in, in the ways that they can participate is super helpful, too. Like, I know for me, I, I don't remember if I was great about wanting to go to Mass up until I was 10. But from 10 on, I was an altar server. Mm-hmm. And I loved that. I loved having that thing mm-hmm. to do. Mm-hmm. And in the, the parish that I was in growing up, we had you would kind of graduate into different ranks. Like we wore the surplus, yeah. the cassock, mm-hmm. everything, and we'd have the cincher and it would change colors. It was mm-hmm. just like a karate belt, yeah. right? You know? <laughs> and so we gra- We started green, we'd go to red, we'd do white, and then like purple and gold were the big oh, ones, right? So wow. you were always trying to aim towards that. Oh, cool. And it was really cool. Well, you know, a liturgical climber over yeah, here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for me, that worked. Like it was like something and then to aim for. then if you get for. up here, you get a pointy hat and we'll yeah. call it a minor. <laughs> there you go. We'll there you go. Day. <laughs> yeah, but there were certain masses. Like I remember the Holy Thursday Mass was always the best one to serve because it was so different than everything else, you know? Yeah. And then oh, getting yeah. to play with the incense during the homily That's was awesome. So. Every kid wants to yeah. have yeah. the incense. Yeah. Yeah, being an altar server, I was an altar boy. It was, it was great. You'd also get tips every now and again, yeah. which is which is pretty cool. <laughs> nice. Funeral or or wedding? Funeral or weddings? Yeah, you like you you like doing funerals because like, hey, I'm getting paid for this, but it's at the expense of someone's death. So you felt a little <laughs> bit bad about yeah. it. Right? Now the weddings though, you're like, this yeah. is great. Like you are like. No, Tim, dude, I got this one. You got it. You know, don't you have baseball? Don't you have a game? I think check your schedule. Like, in, like that was like your side hustle, right? Was being an altar boy when I was a kid. Um, but yeah, getting twelve o'clock masses. You know, having kind of a, a children's oriented yeah. mass. Even just the time frame. I mean, honestly, you know, everyone's always like, well, I don't want to waste the whole day. And if I go to mass at 12, I get home at one. What else are you going to be doing yeah. that day? You know, I think that's great because, yeah. again, like that makes the day focused around mass. Yeah, right. Yeah. That's the most that's important all thing. we're doing today. Right, that's it. You know, and then we'll get something to eat afterwards. Then maybe take a Sunday nap. And then that's it's it. time to start getting ready for school the next that's day. Right. Yeah. And that's that's the day is oriented to that. So mm-hmm. I, I love that. But Saturday evening masses. Those are also pretty good, mm-hmm. too. The vigil masses for families mm-hmm. makes mm-hmm. a lot of sense as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. One of the reasons why I love the that noon parish family mass is because it does flow into the afternoon. And my hope is with the programming is you can have like two, three hours of programming. And like you said, you have meals there at the church. You have fellowship. Mm-hmm. You develop that sense of the kids' relationships around mm-hmm. their church, mm-hmm. around their faith in Christ. And then, you know, you go home, you take a nap, you relax, you have the family dinner Sunday evening, and then you're you're already kind of ordered in the sense of starting your week. Yeah. You know, the first day of the week is ordered by God, and you're ordered by your family, and you're starting out in those good family dynamics. You've reconciled with God, you've reconciled with one another, and we're starting a new, a new week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So one of the comments we get a lot on, on our, you know, YouTube channel or whatever to say, your intro music, we don't like it. And you can tell it's an older individual. Like you're just, I, I know you're trying to go after young people with your intro music, but I'm like, wait a second. Okay. This music hasn't been for young people since 1973. Okay. This is like <laughs> Led Zeppelin or ACDC. It's great. We like it. It's not for young kids. And I think that brings up the point of people trying to <laughs> make liturgies and things for kids when they have no concept of what kids are into. Mm-hmm. And they're always a day late, dollar short. And they're the, 
They married a certain age and they're the widow of the next, right? Mm -hmm. So you got these adults trying to like make things for kids and like, oh, kids love, I mean, they really love doing the, my name is Jesus and I like to rap, right? You know? <laughs> <laughs> and kids are like, dude, you are the uncoolest thing I've right. ever seen in my life. Yeah. And I think what kids really want, and I think this is something that I've seen in so many interactions with young people. Now we've been talking about younger children, but let's start getting into maybe more teenagers and mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. What they want is authenticity. Sure. They want to know that you're not a hypocrite. They mm -hmm. want to know that what you say is what you actually do. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest thing that turns off kids at that age is hypocrisy um, and inauthenticity. Mm -hmm. And when you start having a kids mass and it's, you know, some it's stuff that's obviously not for kids. Sure. They don't want that. Kids respond more to traditional liturgy mm -hmm. and mystery and things that they can't get in the world. Because, mm -hmm. look, you're never going to make a TV show that's Catholic that's better than, you know, Marvel movies. Right. You're never going to make music that they like more than, you know, whatever it is they listen to nowadays. I don't even know what they listen to. Trap or whatever, right? Yeah. You're not. You're not. <laughs> no, that's that what was... they listen to, right? You're not going to make music like that in church, sure. right? Yeah. You're not going to have what Fetty Wap does the liturgy. It's not going to happen, right? Um, but so, we, and when you try, you just end up looking cringy. Yeah. Oh, you look yeah. cringy. Yeah. So yeah, what don't I even think. Attempt it. So what really I think is going to be the most helpful, and Father, I know you probably know this from ministry, is being authentic and showing the traditions of the church and something that really stands apart mm -hmm. from what they can get everywhere else in the world for free or that's being advertised mm -hmm. to them. One yeah. thing I like doing with um, my older kids is, like, I'll play Hallow. Like, I'll do a, a their Lexio Divina, <clears throat> and then we'll go through it, and I'll say, what you know, what kind of stuck out with you? You know, and we just have conversations about it. Mm -hmm. And so that's that allows me to be authentic about what I heard with her and that God spoke differently to her and, and just be there with God together. You know, Hallow has been very helpful with with my relationship with my older kids. It's it's been such a blessing because I've seen Hallow go across my parish with a lot of my families and using that on the way to church, whether it's yeah. the rosary or whether it's meditations, yeah. and it has been very helpful in respect to the quality that they deliver it. But it's not a quality where it's like they're trying to be something of the right. this kind of trend or generation. Sure. They're revealing something that is beautiful and something ancient. that's inspired them yeah. that's ancient mm -hmm. that's transcendent the thing about transcendence it, it's across it's across all ages yeah. and and it's applicable to one's life and mm -hmm. to the point where you know the authenticity of delivery of the message that is understandable that's discernible mm -hmm. and and carries truth with it that that appeals to every human heart yeah. no matter if it's a kid that's 4 years old or 44 years old or 94 years right. old, it's going to cross through all generations, going to bring us together. And the interpretation of that, what, what's applicable in my personal life is going to be different for all of those generations. And that's where that sharing and that dynamic of, of community development and family development uh, is the joy of, of sharing in the Word of God. Yeah, yeah. I think one of the things that, that we've found a lot of success with is, and, and I started doing this for a practical reason, but it's kind of had a, a really nice unintended consequence. And, and it's, we'll listen to, we use the Amen app from the Augusta Institute, and we'll listen to the readings on the way to Mass. I do it more because I don't know that during Mass I'll be able to hear it because I'm going to be mm -hmm. wrangling some yeah. crazy kids. Mm -hmm. But like our oldest, who's 11, like he's going to be distracted by the younger ones too, mm -hmm. so he can listen to it as well. And then they see that example. There's so much, I think, that this is a good thing to remember for me as a dad, like they're watching me. They're watching, like, am I enthusiastic about mm -hmm. going to Mass? Am I preparing myself for Mass? Or is it more just like, oh, let's just do it. we got to get it over with. Mm -hmm. And then their behavior is going to kind of be launching off of Amen that, right? So you, gotta, you have to think about that, you know, and it's a good kind of gut check reminder mm -hmm. for me because if I'm, if we're rushing, if we're late, if I'm mad, you know, and goodness gracious, like trying to get the kids in the car mm -hmm. drives me nuts. You get know? in the car. We need to be peaceful. Right, that's right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But like taking that step back and being in the right frame of mind, they pick up on that. A yeah, big time. My, my sister sent a meme like maybe, I don't know, like eight years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and it was like, you know, mom preparing us to go to mass. And it was like this kind of like, you know, a mom like the, you know, <laughs> yeah. and then like, like all peaceful looking and then like this monster, yeah. you know, like of like dad's like Ram Rambo like, or something. Exactly. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, to get to get to mass. And, you know, for me, it's like I do remember when mom was fighting us, but I remember more prominently. And this is what impacted me is my mom kneeling straight up in the in the in the kneeler in the pew with her hands folded, and her eyes closed, just taking a moment you know, to pray mm -hmm. before she had to smack my butt when I wasn't kneeling when I'm supposed to or doing yeah. what I'm not supposed to. She <laughs> always took that time to like just lock in to God 
and offer her prayers in preparation for mass. Sure. And, and uh, you know, that, that left a lasting impression on me. So I remember that more than, than the mm-hmm. fighting. Um, but having that disposition is like, okay, am I being authentic in relationship to mass or yeah. am I just forcing this on and proselytizing right. yeah. my children? Right. Because proselytizing anybody never yeah. works. Yeah, I see, I see that sometimes <laughs> in church when my kids are looking at me after I open my eyes. I'm like, dude, you're weird, bro. Stop it. Stop staring at me, kid. <laughs> dude, what do you want, Joe? Stop. <laughs> well, I think that's a really good point. So there's so many things in your life subconsciously, that you do exactly like your parents do. You cook the same food. You celebrate the holidays the same way. You probably like the same sports teams. You probably go to the same parks or whatever. There's all these things that your parents influence you on. Why wouldn't you think that the way that you behave in church is also how your kids are going to react, right? So if they see you kneeling, you know, when you walk in, if they see you uh, going to the to the Blessed Sacrament, um, you know, in the chapel, if they see you, you know, praying and, and whatever, they're going to emulate that, right? right? Uh, so being a visual, it. they want that. They want They it. want to be, oh, kids want to be their parents. And right. you got to give them a good visual example of mm-hmm. what it means to be a Catholic. Mm-hmm. And uh, and like you said, Jordan, and again, this goes back to the point we're making, it's about authenticity. You know, if you're there and you're just like, just, dude, just say the prayer or whatever, like it's, they're not going to get right. the sense of the sacred or yeah. the, the desire or the peace or any of the things that the church promises and offers Mm -hmm. transcendence yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. i think one of the things too like for parents this works for me um but just lower your expectations on what mass is going to be like right (laughs) like and that's another part of the reason why like i like to listen to the readings on the way to mass sometimes mass is just about being in god's presence Mm -hmm. and i'm not going to pick up a lot from the homily i'm not going to pick up a lot from the reading but i'm there and i'm soaking something in Mm -hmm. you know and my kids are there and they're soaking things in too and so, like, I, I can tend to be a bit of a perfectionist, and if mass doesn't happen exactly the way I want it to happen, I'm frustrated. Just let that stuff go. You yeah. Know? I've, and we rolled out a seven-week prayer preparation uh, for our capital campaign, and we uh, utilized Lexio Divina mm-hmm. as a part of it in journaling. And one of that the, was super cool. Yeah, that well, was it really cool. turned out beautifully. Yeah. Um, but equipping the people of God to approach the Word in a very uh, spiritual and infilling manner, because to your point, Jordan, you know, one thing that I learned on my journey when I was traveling around doing mission work overseas is I, I may be in a place where I don't understand the language yeah. and I don't understand perhaps a delivery even in the language of English in another region of the world, but I can be attentive spiritually to discern what is God saying to me in this mm-hmm. in this uh, liturgy of the word? Mm-hmm. What is God communicating in this mass mm-hmm. to me particularly today, mm-hmm. where I am right now in my walk with Christ? Like, what is he saying? Exercising that ability, um, even if you are at a church where you understand everything that the, that the pastor is saying or the priest is saying, the homilist, um, that's great. But at the same time, you want to be listening in the spirit. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm, I'm, I, I like how you described it. It's like, I'm in the presence of God. He's manifesting himself in his word. He's manifesting himself in the source and summit of our faith in the Eucharist and and in the community life where two or more are gathered. So if he's manifesting in this way, what am I receiving today? Mm -hmm. You know, no matter what's going to happen, it could be, you know, uh, a deacon fumbling around in the in the sanctuary that makes you laugh. Um, it could be, it could be other things that could be somewhat distracting yeah. the music, you know, sure. or the priest tries to get up and do a rap to, or like a puppet show for the kids, you know, it's kind of strange, <laughs> but it's like, you know, I'm not going to let that get in the way of me receiving. God, yeah. What are you trying to say? <laughs> God, these puppets. I know this is terrible, but you suffered and died for us and I will do the same for you. Um, <laughs> so I want to move on to what do you do when you have kids who really don't want to go. They're starting to get to the age where they can make a conscious effort. They say, I don't believe in this. I don't want to go. I'm rejecting this. Because, you know, kids, when they get to 13, 14, 15. Oh, it's tough. You know, they're trying to figure out who they are. Their body's freaking out. Their mind's freaking out. They're in such flux. They don't know who they are, and they don't know what they're going to be. And they're trying to figure Mm -hmm. that out. And a lot of times, that's when they reject faith, right? What do you do when a kid says, I don't want to go to Mass because this is stupid and you can't make me? You know, how do do you just say... Too bad. Get in the car. We're going. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you have to take that approach, but that's not always the, that's kind of like an angry last resort. There's other ways to do it. So what are some of the strategies that for parents out there listening who, you know, maybe they have a, a, a young teen, young adult who's just doesn't want to go anymore. You know, I'm, I'm sitting here yeah. listening to you cueing this question, but I'm thinking about the three of you. 
and you guys not suffering that with your children. And I think the reason why is because of your role as father and how enthusiastic you are about your faith. And all the statistics from that Swiss study mm-hmm. back in the like late 90s or whatever, mm-hmm. or early 2000s, that, that articulate the importance of the role of the father in relationship to the spiritual life of their family mm-hmm. um, and how the retention of the practice of the children are retained at like the 90 percentile level, which mm-hmm. is huge. Um, so that's why we that's why we can see that in your family and your children not bucking the system. I think that's one thing. But two, um, I'm real proud of of Kim, you know, uh, who I work with every day, and and the way that she approached her 13 year old child in her adolescence, and you know, fighting against getting confirmed. And mm. it's like, okay, here we are. We're in this we're in this situation where it's like, Lord have mercy, you know, she doesn't want to be confirmed, mm. like. I took her out. We sat down. We had a long conversation, and and um, but ultimately it comes down to like love and openness and authenticity with this person that's that's trying to express their independence, mm-hmm. trying to express their intelligence, and and they're looking all this stuff and they're trying to reconcile it. So let's just give it time. Mm-hmm. Let's give it time. And what she expressed was, look, I undertook a responsibility for you when I had you baptized that I would raise you in the practice of the faith. You are still my responsibility until you leave this house and you you take on, you know, your own responsibilities, you know, you're still in my home. I have a responsibility for you and you're going to come to mass. Mm-hmm. It, it's it's not a it's not a point of argument. This is what this is what uh is 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 how this is going to play out mm-hmm. and you know as as times come on like you know i i see her over there kind of listening but if i make eye contact with her forget it she'll be like you know, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so <laughs> it's just exactly you know so it's a 13 year old yeah. girl but now she's now she's 16 yeah. you know and i just see her spiritual journey like it's okay mm-hmm. you're trying to wrestle with all these things as a kid i do believe in the reformed order by the way on a tangential yeah. point we need to go back why whoever thought it was a great idea to to confirm adolescent kids. Well, like yeah, I think it's so important that you bring that up because a lot of times the battleground for this fight between parents and kids, the battleground is fought on the confirmation yeah. field. And like I remember, I mean, I'm gonna be honest here, I probably shouldn't say this, but when I was getting confirmed, I was like 16. My buddies would sneak out the back and go smoke weed in the parking mm-hmm. lot during mm-hmm. the confirmation classes. I wasn't there for it. I you got know? kicked out. Yeah. I mean, they're just like, what are we going to do with him? Are you talking about the seminary or what are you talking no, about? No, right? <laughs> <Confirmation>. a confirmation <laughs> class. Well, the thing was. I, I spent didn't... a lot of time with Sister Ann, too, so I'm not <laughs> casting any judgment. Yeah. I, was in, I was in trouble a lot, too. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, like the lady was, uh, God bless her heart, uh, Dolores, she was 82, three years old, and I was just like, this is dumb. Yeah. And, and then they asked actually got me I, I got confirmed because i came back the second year <laughs> and they're like he's they back, you back, he's, he's he's back. back. <laughs> we need to confirm this guy <laughs> let's get this kid out of here, get but, see, out of here. but that's the thing they, <laughs> they, they, they treat it like like catholic graduation mm-hmm. and that's that that really most kids have the sense this is catholic graduation yep. and that's the last time a kid will step in church sure. mm-hmm. until they're like 25 in a lot of cases yeah. if they ever come back yeah I made my last sacrament. My mom made me do this last one, but I don't really care. I want to be out partying and you know chasing girls or doing whatever the kids do, or watching TikTok or you know expressing their gender as an animal, whatever it is kids these days do, which mm-hmm. God knows. And but it's confirmation. Okay, I did this last thing. Mom, don't ever ask me again. Don't ever expect me to show up again. Dad, I'm out. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Catholic confirmation as graduation is terrible. Number one, theology and practice. It just doesn't help the kids. Um, that age, you know, and then kids go to college, I think out of, uh, I can't remember the exact number, but in the study that <clears throat> of people who left the Catholic faith, like something about 90% of them leave the faith during their college years between 18 and 24. Mm-hmm. That is that is the most critical window. But, mm-hmm. you know, everyone's always like, well, you need to reach 18 to 24 year olds. Well, you know, stitch in time saves nine, right? Mm-hmm. Good luck converting a kid who's 19 years old you know, doing keg stands at mm-hmm. college that he should be going to church. Mm-hmm. Not going to happen. Getting a 12-year-old to understand why it's important to go to church so that he's not doing keg stands and bumping lines of cocaine instead of going to church, well, that's probably a little bit easier of a right. task, right. right? Yeah, yeah, and not to say that, you know, college campus ministry doesn't work, right? So, you know, some of our friends and, and Father Tim Holita and, and Father Josh Swallows and uh, Mike, Father Mike Nixon and Kewen and all these guys that got really like 
hit hard in the power of the Spirit yeah. during their college years because of the witness of the ministry that was going on in their college campus by people that were like three, four, five, six years right. through their senior, you know, and like drawing them into a retreat and kind of confronting them, you know, like like only a peer could. Mm. These things have inroads for sure, but I see I see what you're saying too at the but same the, they time. They were like the fertile soil. They were the they were the <laughs> seeds that were thrown on the good soil, you know, but a lot of these kids they're getting to college, and they're the seeds that were thrown on the stony path, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that, and it's like that's statistically we're we're setting ourselves up for failure in that in, in that respect. Like, yeah. so we need to be more conscientious with how we begin the formation with children. I, I talk about this with parents all the time, and we we're talking about children as an appendage or like as a, as a side piece or an extension of self. You know, if we're not raising our children in that practice from the time that they are babies where they're learning how to self-soothe and they're learning how to uh, uphold a certain behavior and a responsibility, um, you know, we're failing them as individuals. And then we can't expect that if we aren't upholding that responsibility as in, in the infancy stage and in child development, how are we ever going to do anything yeah. of positive value when they're now, what, teenagers? Or right. now we're going to say, like... Consistency. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it's like we we can't leave it to the children to make their choices. If we sure. left it to the children to make their choices, they're going to be sticking their finger in the outlet and, <laughs> you know, and 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 burning their hand and, and, and you know... When I, was in the, when I was, like, 24, I had my first house. Uh, you know, I got out of an apartment. And I was like, I'm an adult. I can do anything I want now. So I got those like those really thin like angel wing cookies and I bit through a whole stack of them. I was like, I'm an adult, I could do it. But I also took a fork with me to Home Depot and I took a bunch of sockets and I was poking the fork and all of them. Like, this is so therapeutic and cathartic. <laughs> all right, I've been wanting like, every kid wants to do that. I remember I went to the store and I'm like, I'm gonna do this. If kids day. are watching the show right now, do not. They were do not that. plugged Don't in. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But no, I think I really like the point that you made about it's the consistency. Like you never really care about what your kids are doing with their faith life. And then when they leave at 18, you're like, how dare you? Yeah. Mm-hmm. We need to get you back to the faith. Well, dude, you have no working materials to yes. work with. Mm-hmm. You know? There's yes. no basis yeah. to even bring them back. Like I said, it's the parable of the, the sower. Yeah. That is soil that will not accept seed because you've never tended it. You've never put nutrients into this soil that will be able to grow later in life. And but I there think- is a mentality in our generation, though, of yeah. like ra- raising kids where it's like, well, I'm going to just let them choose. Yeah, yeah. for sure. You know, and it precedes us a little bit, but like, you know, what is that, what is that mentality? Yeah. I know for me, one of the things, sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. (laughs) No, I I don't don't care. You go ahead. I know. I know know for me, one of the things that, um, that, that, so I don't have it. My oldest is 11, so we're not quite there yet. But, um, one of the things that we're trying to do is with all the changes that are going on in their body and their mind from, you know, when they hit puberty all the way through college, the church can be that constant, you yes. know? And so there's all this chaos and change happening, trying to figure out who you are, but this thing stays the same. And it's one of the beauties of our faith is it's global, it's global, it's universal. Mm-hmm. It's you go to this Catholic church here or this one across the, the country or this one in another country, it's the same mass that's being celebrated. And you can return to that. And it's always a, a pla- it's an anchor. Mm-hmm. It's a place yeah, of, stability. of constant stability. And so having that in there, I know that that helped me when I was in college because there was a period of time where I was, I was playing rock and roll. I was kind of getting into some stuff. Mm-hmm. And I remember kind of hitting this bottom point where I was like, I I craved being at Mass. I just needed that. Mm-hmm. And and it was there. And mm-hmm. I went back to it. And that was a huge turning point for mm-hmm. me. That's huge. Yeah. yeah, I think there's a, I think a lot of, <coughs> I, I've, I've got some friends that have, you know, college grads. And they're frustrated because they, they don't know what they want to do after spending whatever amount of money. And I think, I think what we're talking about in, in, in educating children and, and bringing them up in the faith and the intentionality that's required, the sacrifice mm-hmm. that's required, mm-hmm. the time that it's going to take you to do that, mm. it's not an easy bake oven, right? Yeah. To use John, John's terminology. And I think a lot of people think, well, that's just what you do. You just go to church. And I look back at us going to church when I was little, it's just what you did. And I remember like coming back to the faith, I remember as a child, like hearing God talk to me and not knowing what was going on. And there was nobody in my life to help guide Mm -hmm. me through Mm -hmm. that to build me up in that. That's a beautiful point, dude. And I was, uh, I was preaching at the mission in San Diego de Alcala, a big shout out, uh, father Peter McGuire, who's the rector out there. Um, and Peter Escalante, who was the rector when I was there. 
Um, but I was preaching and I saw this little four-year-old kid, this little girl stepped up on the, on the, uh, kneeler and she's locked in on me right when I start the mass, dude. And she does not let up like looking, watching everything that I'm doing. And she listened to every single word. And I noticed her cause she's just locked, you know? Yeah. And then, um, after the mass, I'm out the side door where you greet everybody and I'm greeting each person, mainly adults. And then all of a sudden this little girl is like standing there. So I knelt down and face to face and her mom said, you know, my daughter would not allow me to go home without her coming to talk to you. Mm. And uh, I knelt down and, and I said, sweetie, what's on your mind? What do you, what do you have to share? And she said, um, father, during mass, you were speaking directly to me, right? And I said, I said, sweetie, did you feel in your heart that I was speaking like just to you? And she said, yeah. I said, well, that was the Holy Spirit. That was God speaking to your heart. And I said, I want you to remember something, that whenever you come into the church, God is speaking to your heart. And you got to listen, huh? Because he wants your heart to feel the way just you are, like you are right now. He's mm -hmm. speaking to you. He loves you. And uh, she wraps her arms around me, gives me a big hug, you know? And it was just such a moving experience because it's it's God doing something in the midst of the church, yeah. manifesting himself mm -hmm. once again. And, you know, we as adults, uh, me as a priest, we get to witness that. Mm -hmm. You know, we get to witness that when our children receive an inspiration because we're forming them to say, God speaks in the midst of the church, mm -hmm. you know? Let him speak a word into you that rouses your spirit, that lifts up your heart, you know? And it's it's beautiful to see that. Yeah. Ryan, I'm going to ask you a question. What would you do if one of your kids came up to you one day and said, Dad, I don't believe in God? How would you How would you handle that? Oh, Leo did that to me one time. <laughs> Leo did? Uh, yeah, oh, no. and I was like, okay, well, <laughs> you probably don't want to be here. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't mean you don't want to believe that you don't believe in God. That just means you don't want to be here. And he's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that's the that's my um uh, my only experience with that but uh let's say when they get older though they say you're like that i don't you know this isn't for me how how, how would how do you, well, do you have a I plan mean, for it's, that it's about listening to them yes. and where they're coming from yes. all of this is that mm -hmm. right like uh Joe, my wife and Joe, you know, we're, we're, it's our first pancake. You know, he's going through his puberty. <laughs> you know, so there's all this stuff, right? And and they just been going at it, especially when I'm away. And, you know, so I sit down and talk to him about it. And, you know, and, you know, there is a bit of that where he's like, you're not here, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, we could just <clears throat> talk on the phone, you mm -hmm. know? But but it's I, – I don't uncover that by by – saying you did something wrong i'm gonna punish you get it right next time mm -hmm. it's like this is coming from somewhere i it's my duty and responsibility to find out where it's coming from right i understand how grace works and how all that stuff works fortunately so i know that i can't convince him that there's a guy but i can't convince him of his own you know feelings towards that his own rationality towards that i can help him understand where that's coming from and navigating that I think that's what your responsibility as a parent, not you're wrong. There is a God. You need to go to like yeah. all that stuff is just it it's it's laziness. It is laziness. It's, it's, it's good. spiritual my, laziness. My grandmother, <laughs> whom I love and who was always a beacon of faith for me, but she had this magnet on the on the refrigerator that I hated and I did wind up throwing out because it's just like it's just a terrible yeah. mentality. But it's like God said it, I believe it, that settles it. Mm. Yeah. You know, and a lot of times we parent that way too. And and we're yeah. like, you go to church, that's what you do, that settles it. Like, that's not a great argument. <laughs> you know, like there's more to that. Right. And there needs to be more to that. Yeah. yeah. You know, if if St. Peter, our first pope, is expressing in the scriptures to us, be prepared at any given moment to give testimony for the reason you believe, like... <laughs> yeah. We need, to be, we need to be disposed to say, this is why... Ask like, yourself. Why yeah, you go. like why do you yeah. go? And, and if you if you that. can't answer that yeah. question, like look into it. Like mm -hmm. really develop a sense. Like this is why I practice my faith. You have no excuse now. We we got YouTube. Yeah. We got yeah. the YouTube's right. I mean, I, I mean, there's like no excuse. You can find anything. You can. Really. You know, yeah. if your kid comes to you and says, you know, they don't believe in God, why should they? Could you answer that for yourself? Could you 
can you really articulate why you believe in God? Why do you think God is real? Yeah. And if you can't answer that question when you're talking to yourself, how would you ever answer it to right. a kid? You're who's, not going to convey it to anybody. Right. I mean, it's it's just like mm. it's any it's anything else. It's like your profession. <clears throat> you're a lawyer. Right. Well, you know, you had to go to law school. You have to understand this. You have to think that the legal system works and that you're a part of it. Mm -hmm. Right. And so you, you can give testimony on why you're a lawyer. Right. That's you great. can give testimony on mm -hmm. why you're helping people, you know, for, you know, insurance or something and you like it. Right. If you don't have that desire, if you don't have that inside of you, it's not going to be conveyed to a child. Yeah, how mm -hmm. can you give what you don't have? Right. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Now, talking about giving and things that we have, Jordan has brought some stuff that's really it. super cool. That's what I always look for... forward to every show. <laughs> yeah, Jordan. Jordan's like our... It's Christmas. Uh, you know, <laughs> there's some really cool things here for, for kids. Now, this first one that I wanted to talk about, because I think this is a great thing to do for kids, and this is one of the biggest tips that I have for parents, and it's one I've always done, is explaining to kids what's going on at Mass. Yeah. Why is the priest wearing that? Why is that there? Why is that candle lit and not mm -hmm. this one? It's interesting. And if you get kids interested, they're going to be paying attention. Right. So this right here, yep. what is that, Jordan? Because yeah. I know about this, and this is super cool. This is cool, yeah. So it's a, <clears throat> it's a new new item that we're carrying in the store, um, and it's it's the Holy Mass, and it's made, <coughs> made by um, this group <laughs> called the Building Blocks of Faith. Uh, but they use Legos, right? So, like, my kids love Legos. I'm always <laughs> stepping on them. They hurt like crazy. Yeah. But they're put into these, these really cool pictures to illustrate the book, and it's all about uh, the Mass and the different parts of the Mass, but with Legos, right? So it's super cool. <laughs> I don't know why we're laughing. <laughs> because Delacross is sneaking in I'm on your frame. Yeah. Yeah. Show this to the camera. If but you're uh, listening on the this podcast. Is, but this is, exactly, this is exactly what we were talking about just a minute ago. Mm -hmm. You know, like, when, when the kids can be at Mass, and it's really cool because it's got like a Lego no, this, red the, vestment. This is Ke Kevin and Mary O'Neill, and I, I've talked they're to awesome. Kevin. Yeah. They're great people, and they this high they're, quality. They're using these building blocks. Yeah, right. not Legos. They're, they're no, not Lego. They're yeah. Legos, right? <laughs> this is the Jesuit yeah. approach of evangelization, right here. I mean, you're yeah. meeting the kids where they are culturally appropriated. Right. Yeah. They're building Legos. They mm -hmm. love Legos. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping I have this contact that mentors the main contact of Lego Europe. And I really wanted John Paul II Lego for the Lego room. So that like a cool. massive size yeah. JP2 yeah, Lego, you know. Cool. And then the kids be can go in for that to be destroyed. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, you gotta you gotta glue that together. Like, yeah, it's Lord, all glued together. He's such a rookie. Well, like Lord Business, you gotta glue it together, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. The president of business. Yeah. This is Some just crangle. this is like really the quality <laughs> though. Like the the quality paper, yeah. you know, the storytelling. Like I'm looking at the Ark of the Covenant, yeah. all built in Lego. It's kind of like a graphic novel too, which kids love and there's a lot of these books that kids shows are, them the order of the mass mm, shows the age priest. group for that Jordan yeah this one's 41 gonna, I think this one so like all of my boys would love this like yeah. even the ones that can't read they just love to look at the pictures mm -hmm. obviously my 11 year old would read it and he would love that he's real into wow. a lot of those yeah. uh, like, it's really good yeah the books that are show look, that. At, look at the mm -hmm. sacred heart here that's like, cool and, and also kids love Lego sets and the creativity that they've done here I mean that's look at the one. look at the divine mercy oh, there. oh wow check that out I didn't even see that yeah, yeah. Mercy they'll probably start building their own like mass at yeah. home with their Legos. Now they also have like mass kits too mm -hmm. that you buy the actual building blocks. I gave that to uh, Elliot, uh, Amy, and Mark Molzer. I gave that to their yeah. to their son Elliot, who's like one of our altar servers here. Now they also have same group puts together this one, right? Yeah. Jordan? So this one is the mysteries of, or a pocket guide to the Holy Rosary. So this is a short one, but it just goes through the rosary and it's the same kind of thing. You know, it it focuses on right. that graphic novel approach using Legos. And uh, this would be a great thing for kids to follow along with while they're saying the rosary goes through all the different mysteries and helps unpack those. So super cool. And they also have a kit that you can make a rosary out of Lego. So where can they get these two things, Jordan? Yeah, these two books are on everythingcatholic.com. Just go straight there and you'll you'll find them. So and I mean, in all reality, if you want anything Catholic, it is on everything Catholic. There you go. And there is some incredible stuff on here for babies, for kids, books, devotionals, home goods, mm -hmm. fragrances. You know, we always we really got into the chrism uh, the, this oh, yeah. last show. Which is awesome. And this Jordan, you're going to give us something like chrism. You're going to give everyone a discount, right? Yeah, that's I expect right. that for our listeners because right, yeah. I'm their I am their advocate. Yes. Well, look at that. Fifteen percent off with 15? the code nice. talk at checkout. So if you use the code talk T A L K mm -hmm. at everythingcatholic.com, mm -hmm. you will be able to save fifteen percent off of everything like this this Lego book and these things like oh, that. That's cool. Mm -hmm. 
What else you got for us? Yeah, so this <clears> one's <throat> kind of in the same vein. Um, this is a uh, mass ring that goes through the different parts of the mass. Great thing for kids to follow along with. And each each different card has just a simple picture with an explanation on the back. And it goes from the start of mass to the end of mass. And this one's made by another one of our vendor partners, Catholic Family Crate. They have several awesome items on everythingcatholic.com. Um, but this is one of my favorites, and my six-year-old loves this. He's always got it in his hand when we go to mass. And you're leaving so, these with us too, correct? Yep, leaving them with you. Yeah. So these are kind of that's kind of like what you're talking about. It's almost like an order of the mass that's or right. a missal, mm-hmm. yep. but oh, a wow. little flipbook style. And we've got other uh, got the Catholic Gloria, family crate. The collect. Collect. Yep. Wow. We've got other items on the store <laughs> from the same vendor. Mm-hmm. We've got one that unpacks the rosary. We've got a really cool paint by sticker that has different Ooh. Images that cool. you might see in mass, or images from the faith that you can use different stickers to color. I love that, like the responsorial psalm, thinking of uh, King David mm-hmm. with the harp. Mm-hmm. You know, then what's it have on the back? It has the explanation. It has the explanation. Right. Yeah. That's so I mean, cool. instead of an iPad, you know, maybe maybe drop a couple bucks. Sure. This is cheaper than an iPad, and yes, right. give well, it to your kid for mass. Like, you and know? I, you know, I I definitely mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. use uh, you know iBrievery and like different digital offerings like ha- Hallow. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. Hallow's phenomenal. But there's there's something too of just having no distraction, no other correlation with your device, and like this is exclusively for prayer. Right. This yeah. is exclusively it sets that time apart. Yeah, it sets it apart, and it should be like I love. I, there's a clear difference when I pray the liturgy of the hours with Hallow or or, um, or the I breviary, and then actually having my breviary in my hand. Right. Yep. You know, there's there's a distinction. Yeah. I'm grateful for the services because it helps me because life is crazy. Sure. And it's like, I need to pray my evening prayer. I need to pray daytime prayer. Yeah. It, it makes it super convenient. I'm really, really grateful. Yeah. But, you know, to have these things in the kids' hands during Mass is really, really important. So I see that you got this, too. And this looks like a – is this your rosary, Ryan? Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, one I can chew on. <laughs> <laughs> what is that, Jordan? Yeah, yeah. So we got two rosaries from Choose Life, which is another new vendor that we've just added to the store. These are silicone rosaries, so these are great for babies. Um, so is it Choose like C H E W S? That's right. Choose, oh, that's right. right. So that's it's cool. a chew toy, but it's also what a, rosary, a clever right? idea. Yeah. That's cool. and they're really neat. You know, like they're they're chewable. They're totally safe to chew can on. Can I have a, uh, yeah, a bite here? Grab this one right here. <laughs> they they go, like, I don't want to bite on Delacrosse's <laughs> <That's right>. <laughs> <laughs> He's such a goon. <laughs> it's a better oh, picture. Is that good? Yeah. You like it? This is better than the thing. Uh, <laughs> I can't what, even break what's it. The thing that, break what's it. the thing that Joe Rogan's selling with like you, you chisel uh, yeah, off your, your jaw? Your jaw yeah. So I can just like. You're uh, that double chin? <laughs> yeah, I can just start working. I get wow, you look like chin. Mike Schmitz already. <laughs> we'll start chewing on this every day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to catch you, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Mike, where's our candle? Right here. Right there. Uh, He's okay. always present. This block good. <laughs> Father Michael Schmitz is always Pray with for us. us. <laughs> or for Novus. So uh, Choose Life, they're a great company. They do all kinds of things for children, and then they also... Their profits help support pro-life ministries. Mm-hmm. Great company. We love the the uh, yeah. owners of the company. The yeah, they're it's fun. Beautiful. Good people. Yeah. Um, but this is really cool. I mean, this is a great gift for baptisms, a great gift for uh, birthdays. It's really quality. Uh, you know, for Easter baskets or yeah. Christmas things. For, you know, little kids. Um, yeah. uh, the dude, thing I like about that, it though, is that's it's gross. so big, right? Yeah. Like, it's like mm-hmm. losing it is not going to happen. Not going to happen. Right. <laughs> right. We're right. breaking yeah. it. Yeah, we're breaking it. Yeah. Well, and we had we had for years like the multicolored, big, chunky wooden bead rosaries, but those things like they become a weapon a little too easily. <laughs> and they hurt. Like this isn't gonna hurt. Um, and you know if they start to get some teeth and chew on it, there's little things falling off into their mouth, and this isn't yeah. gonna do that. It's yeah. got the these like raised nubs on the cross that are great for babies who are teething and things like that. And isn't so. that cool? Like the suffering of teething is mm-hmm. met by the cross. Yeah, like that's beautiful. The same Apollonia model. Yeah. 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 All right, so what are these? Yeah, and then the last two are, again, books. These are crinkle books from uh, Be a Heart, um, another one of our favorite vendors. And these these would be for little babies to chew on, to play mm-hmm. with. Mm-hmm. Um, great to bring to Mass. This one is the baby's first devotional. It's just got a few pages. It kind of goes through some different Catholic images. Uh, there's the monstrance right there. Wow. It's really pretty. The Divine Mercy Rays. Yep. And then there's uh, Baby's First Story of St. Francis. So this one goes through St. Francis and has some similar... Uh, fun, kid-friendly pictures. And these are awesome because, you know, you can toss them in the washing machine if they That's get dirty. Crazy. I love and the crinkly. Get, yeah, and they, they're just fun for the kids. I mean, they're tactile. Uh, yeah. St. Francis and the Wolf, the Cardinale. 
Again, all this stuff is available on everythingcatholic.com. If you use the code TALK, T-A-L-K, you'll save 15% on all of this. And they have a category right in the top menu yeah. for babies and, kids. babies and kids. So you can go right to all this stuff. But you can also check out all this stuff for you know adults. So they have great rosaries, apparel. Uh, devotionals, home goods, all the stuff. But if you're looking specifically for this kid stuff, go to the babies and kids section, use the code TALK, say 15%. Everythingcatholic.com. Hey. What are these here? <laughs> yeah, so I've got, the last thing I want to show is just, um, again, from Be a Heart, uh, who we just looked at the crinkle books from. These are rattlers. Oh, those are nice. Yeah, oh, so these cute. are fun. Uh, Jesus and Mary. Again, My for mama. the little guys or little gals, um, fun to chew on, fun to play with. These would be great to bring to mass. Like do yeah. you want to keep that? I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I really do. Oh, oh. I really do. Yeah. Quit chewing on Joseph's head, son. <laughs> yeah. This would be awesome for babies. And then if, for kids that are a little bit older, we've got a Holy Family doll set here, too, which is cool. So we've got Mary. And then I love Joseph because his That's hair great, is dude. insane. Yeah, he's, you he's know, like that, looks like, that looks like Della Cross during COVID. <laughs> True story. <laughs> well, you kind of look like you during COVID. It too, because your true. beard met the back of your like mullet that you had going on. <laughs> that was pretty rough. Yeah. That's right. yeah. So Josephy's got little tools too I for love his that. workshop. That That's great. Cool. Very cool. So my boys like that one, and then and then baby Jesus here too. And so these are from Be a Heart. These are Be a Heart as well. Yeah, they Again, make really on, cool stuff. Great quality and, material. You know, like, I yeah. love what you do with everything, Kathy. That you're buying stuff from Catholic vendors. Right. You're not buying stuff off of Amazon and just. You know, it's just made by whomever to, you know, for making money. We have to support each other. Yeah. You know, we've got to support each other in entrepreneurial yeah. efforts. And I love what you're doing. And we get to it's meet a lot about. of these families uh, or the different creators behind the brands. And they're awesome people. Yeah. And they've got a real heart for this stuff. And so it's fun to get this into the hands of other people. <laughs> <laughs> Feed my sheep. Do you love me? <laughs> yes, I do, Jesus. Sheep, Rattling Jesus, yes. Rattling Jesus. <laughs> Uh, Jordan, it's always awesome to have you on. I mean, you know, you're one of us, you know, you're, you're a father, you have so much insight into the, you know, how you're raising your kids, but then everything that you do with everything Catholic, super cool stuff. That's really helping parents like us have yeah. stuff to, you know, and instruct pastors our kids like me with, too, yeah. to be able to have this on hand, to be able to, yeah. you know, pass on to our families. Yeah, you got to yeah, get this stuff totally. for your kids. Yeah, big shout out to my mom's ministry because my mom's ministry at the parish, they're at every single baptism. They put together a basket or like a little gift bag for every Jeez. single family. And it's stuff like this. That's and awesome. they just, can save 15% on elements for that <laughs> basket by going to everythingcatholic.com and using the code TALK. that mom's ministry? Yeah. you go. T A L K. I also want to give a shout out to our sponsor. We talked about them in this episode, Hollow. So, if you go to catholictalkshow.com forward slash hollow, you can try out the app for free. And it really is the best Catholic app out there. It has so many resources. Uh, it has prayer guides. It has a new Bible feature. They have uh, new group features. They have parish features coming up. They got a lot of really new, um, awesome features to adding to it, and it keeps growing every day. Uh, over a billion prayers have been said through this app. Uh, it's a number one Catholic app for a reason. I literally use it every single day. I'm not just telling you like, hey, they you sponsor it, so buy it. Too. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. every day. You know, it's 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 that kind of thing that you can incorporate in your life and use technology in a positive way instead of, you know, in the negative ways that technology too often is used. Mm -hmm. So true. So go to CatholicTalkShow.com forward slash. Hello. So and another technological way that you could really look into some cool stuff that's happening through new evangelization is My Little Saint Adventures. Yeah. You know, it's a wonderful way for kids to adventure with the saints in a beautiful, creative way. And, you know, the impact of evangelization and looking to uh, how we can influence our kids from you know, an early age and catechize them and introduce them to the mysteries of our faith and the way that that's played out in the saints' lives. I know for me, having the book on on the saints and as a kid looking through that book and getting to know St. Anthony, getting to know St. Francis was very important. Well, now the animation that we can do with technology is next level. And mm -hmm. I mean, it's phenomenal. Yeah, Little mm -hmm. St. Adventure is a really cool app. I mean, it's basically a catechetical tool for kids in the form of an app. It's got games. I mean, you know, you should Bible stories. Yeah. You quizzes. Should, you should uh, apples at a snake and you'd have yeah. your kids learn about, you know. Yeah. I've played that game and I have enjoyed that game. Were you any good at it? Yeah. Uh, it was okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I, man, I smoke those. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it's a great app. It's got five-star rating on the app store. Um, it's for kids ages, I'd say about four to eight or nine. Yeah. You know, it's uh -huh. right in that age when they're going through their, you know, first confession, first Holy Communion. Uh, and it's an app that you can feel good about them using. So if you go to LittleSaintAdventures.com. LittleSaintAdventures.com. Yeah. Yeah.
Thanks for joining us today. Yeah, it's always a joy. Thanks to for have hanging you. out with us, even though and we're a bunch of big kids. Jordan, That's what right. a pleasure. It's yeah, always good to have me. you at the house and yeah. have some fellowship. So as we continue to go forward, make sure that you're subscribing, giving us a thumbs up. That helps us out tremendously. And make sure you're sharing this content. We're on all the social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and we're continuing to spread the good news of the Catholic Talk Show, and you help us every time you do stuff like that. So God bless you, and to our patrons out there, thank you for supporting the financial components of making this show available to the markets that we're in, and we wouldn't be able to do this without you. So if you're considering becoming a patron of the show, go to patreon.com forward slash Catholic Talk Show, or even better, go to our website, catholictalkshow.com forward slash Patreon, and we've got amazing tiers and some cool gear to send your way to say thank you. In between meantime, let's pray for one another and continue to build up the mystical body of Christ, for we are one body in him who loves us, who has joined us together. God bless you. See you next week. Mm-hmm.